Hello everybody and welcome to OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. I'm Jack and today I've got a standard deck analysis for you guys. As it's a Monday, we've got an X and Y on list. It's going to be Regice, Vileplume, Miltank. Um, a deck that isn't all that popular. It's, it's quite popular. It's seen um, a few people have been talking about it. Um, but it's three really powerful cards in their own right. Um, and when they're together, they can really sort of put um, a real force on the board. Locking your opponent out of a lot of things, doing a lot of damage, um, and in general just performing really well against some of these top tier decks. Um, just before I start though, I'm just going to, uh, we, we would like your input basically. As of Wednesday, Joe is planning on starting the PTC Geo Ladder Series, um, where he's basically going to see if he can make it to the top of the ladder using a special customised rule set. And basically we need your, your guys' input on what you want that rule set to be, especially for this first month or however long it usually is. Um, so yeah, we'd like your input. If you leave down in the comments any any type of sort of rules or um, perhaps penalties that Joe has to in, um, incur on himself, anything like that, that's basically going to make the run a lot more interesting. So he's not just going to hop onto the ladder with Night March and win in X amount of games. It's going to make him really think, perhaps play in a format or a style that he wouldn't usually play in. Um, things like limiting numbers of cards you can have in a deck or if you if Joe loses with the deck three times maybe he can't play it anymore on the ladder or he has to change deck maybe once every four four wins or three wins or something like that just something to keep the um, series a little bit interesting and just so it's not your run of the mill um, ladder series where Joe just tries to get to the top as quickly as possible we want it to be um, or more interesting than that we want, we want something unique so definitely leave your suggestions down in the comments. Uh, we'll pick one for this month, but um, if there's a lot of suggestions, perhaps we'll do a straw poll to pick one, the one for the next month. Or if there's a lot of thumbs up on certain ones. Basically, th this uh, series has a lot of customizability um, or customization. So if you guys just let us know the rule sets you would like to see, um, and we'll implement them as and when the different seasons uh, start and end. But bar that, let's hop straight on. I've just noticed there's meant to be four Oddish in here. We'll start off with the Vileplume line. As you can see, we've got a 4-3-3 Oddish Gloom Vileplume line. Obviously playing Vileplume for the irritating pollen ability, stopping both players play item cards. This is such a huge ability. Item lock is something that's always been around, um, and until very recently was pretty much solely used by uh, Seismitoad. Then Trevenant saw some play around US, na uh, around UK and US Nationals time, and now we've got a third item locker in the form of Vileplume. This one's a bit different since it blocks both people playing items, um, and you might think that's a bit of a hindrance, but you can definitely sort of tech your deck out to mean that you don't have to rely on items, especially with cheap attackers like Miltank and Regice. It means you're not all that reliant on items at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, we're, we're running Vileplume just for the irritating pollen ability, just because it's really, really strong. We've then, as I mentioned, have, we then have three Miltank. Miltank, again, just for the one attack, powerful friends doing 10 damage for one colourless. But if you have a stage 2 on the bench, this does 80 damage instead, which is obviously a really strong attack, especially when powered, uh, when partnered, sorry, with Vileplume. It means that you're doing eight, uh, 80 damage for one energy and you're locking your opponent and you have um, other things like Regice and Shaman to be able to do damage as well so yeah Miltank's definitely a really good card and has always seen a little bit of play on the fringes and then our final attacker though um, Shaman can be used as an attacker our main final attacker is Regice Regice pretty much just with this resistance, abil uh, resistance blizzard attack doing 70 damage and preventing all effects of attacks including damage from Pokemon EX. If your opponent has no way to deal with this, Regice is basically, it basically wins games. It can just uh, completely block your opponent, especially if you don't play any more than sort of four or five prizes down onto the bench. It means that they're going to have to find a way to deal with Regice, and if they can't, they will just lose the game eventually. So, really, really strong, especially when paired with things like Vileplume locking items as well. Definitely a really, really strong ability. Obviously, Regice's first attack as well, Ice Beam, can be really disruptive as well. Flip a coin if Hedra, opponent's active is now paralysed. 
that can be really disruptive as well because they can sometimes miss attacks. Um, so yeah, Regice is just a really, really sort of trolly, stally Pokemon. And then finally, rounding off the Pokemon, we have two Shaman EX, you know, just to draw things and Sky Return if we need to, to draw more things. Shaman is just in e just everywhere at the moment, there's only one or two decks that don't play it, so Shaman, definitely a really good card. Um, so yeah, that's the Pokemon. As you can see, a really sort of consistent list. Um, the whole idea of the deck is to just get as consistent with Vileplume as possible. Um, so yeah, we've gone mega consistent and... It's just, uh, there's nothing that you don't need in here. Onto the trainers, we've got four Acrobike. Again, a lot of these are just for consistency. Four Acrobike and four Trainers Mail. Just to be able to get the turn one Vileplume as much as possible. As you can see, there are quite a lot of items in here. And despite Vileplume ice unlocking us uh, uh, as well, it doesn't matter all that much. Um, because we have ways around the item lock. And uh, pretty much as long as you get the turn one item lock, you're pretty set from there because um, you're disrupting your opponent more than yourself a lot of the time because you don't really need items yourself as long as you find a consistent way of being able to attach energy and things like that you don't need all that many items yourself um, so a lot of these items are just for being able to um, set up the turn one file plume in all honesty we've got four acrobike and four trainers mail both really good consistency cards um, getting you what you need early on and then the three level ball the three level ball can actually only search the oddish and gloom so you can tell they're pretty much solely for that just to be able to pick up these early oddish and gloom um, to be able to get one or two vile plumes down early on to stop your opponent Lysander killing them just to be able to consistently item lock as well we've then got four ultra ball um, ultra ball is a bit more universal it can search out anything uh, a lot of the time we're going to be searching out shamans with it, but it can definitely be used to search out um, vile plume pieces as well. And the Ultra Ball is really, really good, um, just for getting rid of your hand size to then um, help with drawing cards for shaman. So yeah, definitely a really good card. And again, it doesn't really matter that we've got four, uh, even though we're playing an item lock deck, because it's just going to make us get turn one vile plumes a lot more consistently. Consistently. Um, which is just the main thing, really. Uh, we then have 4AZ, um, which is a bit of a crazy number, but we've gone for 4 simply because um, it's just so so useful. It gets around your own item lock with Vileplume because you can pick it up and then drop it all back down with Forest of Giant Plants in one turn. So you can pick it up, use a couple of items, uh, maybe you need to search out for another Mill Tank or a Reg Ice or something like that, um, and then you can drop the Vile Plume all back down straight away which is really useful um, obviously it can also pick up Shamans for more cards and um, it can also it's another really good uh, way of stalling out with Regice if your opponent's just been chipping away at this with a non EX sometimes they'll have done bits of damage but they won't have actually done enough to take the knockout so you can actually pick up the Regice and send up another attacker um, especially something like Mill Tank which only requires one energy to attack so you're not even going to be really behind on energy um, attachments or attacks uh, just to heal off the damage um, and make your opponent deal with another Regice which can really really um, throw a spanner in the works for many decks just because it means they have to deal with um, some of these really annoying Pokemon more than once especially if they've only got one or two non-EX attackers um, it can seriously flip games in your favour that you wouldn't usually expect um, would be in your favour we then have three Lysander um, Lysander, again, is just another really good stally card, especially if your opponent perhaps only has one or two um, non-EXs in the deck that can attack. You can pick them off with Regice, um, or just start damaging them before they're really ready to attack, um, which is obviously so good. Just to be able to stop your opponent really setting up against you, um, especially when they have diff difficult conditions to set up against you under with Irritating Pollen, ability it means that being able to set up is a lot harder um, obviously with irritating pollen as well there's a lot less uh, ways to switch and we've also lost Keldeo so they're gonna have to be manually retreat retreating or using something like an AZ of their own to be able to send up an, a different active Pokemon which can obviously be really really disruptive um, again even more so especially under item lock where you're gonna want to be using 
uh, different supporters rather than things like AZ, um, just to be able to get out of sticky situations. You're going to be wanting to use things like Sycamore to draw through your deck. Speaking of, we have four. Um, again, just the best supporter we've got in the set, in the format at the moment. Um, and yeah, again, super consistent. Helps getting Vile Plumes turn one really, really easily. Um, and just a lot, of, uh, a lot of uses out of this guy. I'm pretty sure we'll always see some form of Sycamore in the format now, which is really good in my opinion, because I think he's probably one of the best supporters we've had in a long time. Rounding off the trainers, we have two Muscle Band and four Forest of Giant Plants. Obviously, the four Forest of Giant Plants is to be able to get Turn 1 Volplumes as consistently as possible. Four Forest also means we can bounce annoying stadiums like Skyfield, things like that, that are just going to um, get on our nerves and annoy our opponent if we get rid of them as well. And again, as long as we've got a Forest of Giant Plants out, we can pick pick up a Vileplume with an AZ and then put it all straight back down again, which is super strong and gets around our own item lock every now and again, which is really useful. Especially when we want to do an extra 20 damage with something like a Muscle Band. If we perhaps have a Vileplume on the bench, um, but need that extra 20 damage, we can pick up the uh, Vileplume and attach the Muscle Band to a mill tank or a reg ice. Um it's really good with reg ice because it turns your resistance blizzards into a two hit against pretty much all non mega EXs. Um and obviously more damage is great with mill tank doing a hundred instead of eighty is always really strong and um pretty much secures the knockouts on a lot of different things. Um in, in a lot less hits than you'd usually expect. So yeah, it's definitely really useful to be able to pick up the Vile Plume and then have some fun with trainers to be able to then drop the Vile Plume back down um, with no real cost and be able to consistently item lock your opponent while getting around it yourself, um, which is the main reason why we're in 4AZ as well. Finally, onto the energy, we have 4 double colourless energy. Again, Reg Ice is do uh, double colourless compatible. Technically... Mill tank is double colourless compatible. Um, a lot of the time, you're going to be wanting to w attach a water instead, but you don't. Ha that you, if you're really struggling, you can attach a double colourless. Um, and if you somehow don't have a vile plume on the bench, you can hammer in if you really, really need the damage. But a lot of the time, you're just going to be attaching one energy to the mill tank. Um, and obviously, shaman is double colourless compatible. And then finally, six water energy, pretty much solely for reg ice, just to be able to consistently ice beam and, re and resistance blizzard as much as possible, um, especially under your own item lock. You've got we've got quite a few energy to be able to draw into consistently, and um, just co constantly be able to apply pressure on our opponent and stop them from being able to get through our item lock or our ex lock with resistance blizzard. Okay, so here we're going to head into a game here. I don't know why the uh, sprites aren't loading very well. Um, but it looks like we're going to be facing some sort of metal Rayquaza deck, I would imagine, with lightning. Sorry, with colourless and metal. Um, you may hear me drinking throughout this battle. I've got a really sore throat at the moment. So um, you may hear glugs of water every now and again just to stop me from dying on my feet and coughing and spluttering all the way through the video. Unfortunately, we have to start with Shaman, which is not the ideal starter, but it's okay. And we actually see an Agron, which is really, really interesting. Agron is definitely not what I expected to see here. Um, so, not the best of starts. We're going to go for a level ball, grabbing an Oddish. Um, and dropping the Oddish down. We're then going to do Forest of Giant Plants and get into the Gloom as well. Um, I'm then going to acro bike just to see what we get. We have a forest of giant plants and a trainer's mail. Definitely going to take the drain trainer's mail here, just to be able to get, hopefully, be able to get a sycamore or something. So we'll use that first. And there are no trainers, which is really unfortunate. Um, two mill tanker gloom and a water, so we won't take anything. But it shouldn't matter too much because we do actually have an AZ. Um, we can use on the shaman. I don't think we're going to be able to attack this turn, which is really unfortunate, since there is no way of us being able to get this Gloom out of the active um, once we pick up the Shaman but hopefully we'll be able to get the item lock either way we'll drop the Shaman back down and go for a few more cards and let's see what we get off the trainer's mail we do get an Ultra Ball which is really good so we are going to be getting an item lock even if it's not the best way of doing so 
Um, I'm actually going to go for the level ball. Whoops, I'm going to go for the level ball first. Um, just to get another Oddish on the bench. Um, and then I will Ultra Ball the Lysander and Sycamore, because we've got a Sycamore for next turn. Getting ourselves a Vileplume into play. It does look like there's only one in the deck, so uh, this could be pretty tough. I'm actually going to evolve the bench one, just so he doesn't knock out the active um, Vileplume. And obviously, Vileplume has a much higher retreat cost than Gloom. And we are set up for a Sycamore next turn, which should hopefully be quite strong. Hopefully we'll be able to get into one of our attackers and some energy. So he's going to attach a double colourless. It's been a while since I've seen Agron um, played. Not many people play Agron. He's gone for the Hex Maniac, which is obviously quite a big weakness for this deck. Um, it does stop the irritating pollen, pollen, irritating pollen, irritating pollen item lock, um, but... It's uh, something that there's no w real way for us to be able to get around. So we're just going to have to let him have a turn of trainers here. It's very unlikely it's going to play one, maybe t maybe two. Any more than that, I would be very surprised. Um, obviously, he will play VS Seekers, but only if he can get his hands on a VS Seeker or a Hex Maniac from here. Um, will he be able to do the same again next turn? He is going to knock out the Gloom, so I'm going to send up the Shaman and... We'll see what um, what we can do here. Obviously, the train lock, the the lack of train lock goes into our turn, so we can go again um, and use our go ahead and use our trainers. I'm not going to take the AZ here because I think Sycamore is just a better supporter for us, for us overall. Uh, we do get both of our attackers and a DCE, so we could actually Sky return here, um, or we could bench the Reg Ice and start. Attaching energy to that. The Reg Ice is going to be really, really vulnerable to a Steel Headbutt. Um, especially if he gets the Heads or the second attack. Raging Hammer. Um, again, if he if he manages to Lysander it up, that's going to be really, really sticky. Um, but it could seriously lock him down. If he manages to um, not be able to do anything here, I think the best course of action is probably benching the Mill Tank and then attaching the double colorless and bouncing the hmm maybe we'll bench an oddish as well and then we'll bounce the shaman back into our hand um, and we'll throw up the oddish because I'd rather the oddish die than the mill tank because we're going to be able to hit with mill tank next turn yeah it's been a long time since I've seen anyone play Agron. Um there was a really weird ag Agron list that I saw a few weeks ago. It was like Agron Mega Rayquaza, um, which I'm not fully sure how that worked, but definitely an interesting list. Um, again, a bit of a tough spot. I think here, here may be a good time to bench the Regice um, and start attaching to it. I feel like he would have Lysandered the Vile Plume if he had one. So, attaching to the Reg Ice may not be a bad idea. We are going to leave a Mill Tank stuck up there, but um, I think it'll be okay. We could also shame him to try and pick up an AZ as well, uh, which would be really useful. So, let's go with that and see what we can get. We'll attach the Double Colorless to Reg Ice, because if, uh, if we damage him, he's going to be able to knock us out with Raging Hammer. Um which will be really, really annoying. Um, because we'll have to send up the Reg Ice, which is more than likely going to get knocked out um, if we can't get anything decent. We'll again throw down an Oddish, just because it's the best best thing for us to lose here. And then I'll see if we can get an AZ or something. We get a Lysander, um, which could be really good to just stall with the other Agron. I think that's probably... A good idea. We'll evolve into Gloom. Um, I'm going to avoid evolving into a second Vile Plume, just so we can still use um, the sort of AZ tactic of being able to pick up the Vile Plume um, and then drop it back down in a turn. But we do have a second Gloom ready uh, and waiting. If he does manage to take out this Vile Plume, um, we're going to be able to still get 
a gloom or a Valplume setup relatively easily. Um, here, we could attach to the Reg Ice, but there's no way of us retreating it really. So I feel like it's probably best for us to just attach to the Mill Tank and hit with it. I can't see him. He again hasn't Lysandered, um, so I'm relatively sure he doesn't have a Lysander in hand, at least um, not right now. And he only he attached and Mega Evolved, so he definitely doesn't have a way of being able to switch this guy out either. So I think um, attaching to the Mill Tank is fine. I'm very tempted to AZ uh, to Sycamore here to try and pick up an AZ, but we are going to be losing two energy, and I don't know whether it's worth. I think it's probably worth it. We'll go for the Sycamore, see if we can pick up an AZ or something, and an energy. We do pick up an AZ and an energy, which is really good. Um, so next turn, even if this mill tank doesn't go down, we're going to be able to pick up the mill tank and send up the reg ice um, and start locking with resistance blizzard, which is really really good. Um, there's no real reason to bench the mill tank here. I think. Um, our method of winning this game will be through Reg Ices, so we'll um, yeah we'll just use powerful friends and hopefully get the Reg Ice set up next turn to stall him out for the rest of the game. It's not a particularly elegant deck. It's a deck that relies on stalling, but there are a lot of decks in the format that do that at the moment. Okay, so he was holding the Sycamore for a couple of turns. I can only presume because he didn't um, want to get rid of the DC or the Mega Agron that he had, which is fair enough. Um, we're going to attach a water to the Reg Ice, AZ up the Mill Tank. We don't mind losing the energy. And then bring up Reg Ice um, and use Resistance Blizzard. If we can manage to pick up this Shaman as well, um, through the means of AZ or something, it's going to mean that he, unless he has a way of being able to knock out this Reg Ice with a non EX attacker, which he definitely does, they often play Heatran, um, or he could even power up a Bronzong in all honesty. Um, so there's definitely ways of him being able to do that. Uh, it's going to make it. It's going to make it really difficult if he cannot um, take the four prizes on our bench at the moment. So he's just going to part uh, Shauna and then Mega Evolve. And we do actually hit the second AZ, meaning we can pick up the Shaman, um, and we then can bench the Mill Tank and be able to power, uh, start powering a second attacker up, just in case he does have a way of being able to knock out the Reg Ice. I'd really like a second Reg Ice here, um, but unfortunately we don't have one. I do think picking up the Shaman is the right play though, so we're going to go for that. Um, I'm going to bench the Mill Tank, and whilst it seems a little bit wasteful, I'm going to attach a DCE just because. At least we, this guy's ready to attack now. And then we'll go for a resistance blizzard. Knocking out the active Agron EX. Um, taking two prizes. And hopefully forcing him to, into a tough spot. He sent up the one without energy. Which uh, probably means he's not he doesn't have a real way of being able to get around this Reg Ice for now. Um, no Lysander or anything like that. Because he probably would have sent up the other one. And he is going to pass it back to our turn. Um... And we're just going to continue. There's no real reason to use any of the cards in our hand. They'd be much better used if he manages to knock out the Reg Ice um, to be able to set up another one as quickly as possible. So we might as well keep everything in our hand um, and just continue resistance blizzarding. Like I say, the deck's not the most fun. It's not the most interesting. It's kind of boring, but it is definitely a really strong competitor in today's format. We do indeed get a second Reg Ice. How many water energy have gone? We've got three energy, three water energy in the discard, and there's one on the active. So there's only two left in the deck. Um, is it worth setting up another Reg Ice? Um, it might be. I have noticed he's attached this Bronzor, so he does realise that he's going to have to start using Bronzong eventually. Um, so a Lysander would have been really nice there, just to be able to t take out that Bronzor nice and early. Uh, we've gone through two, so there hopefully is one more in the deck. I think I will bench the Reg Ice and attach a double colourless. Um, just simply because it's a better... Uh, I'd rather him take that out than something like the Vile Plume or the Gloom. Um, even if even if we can't find that other energy. And we're just going to carry on Resistance Blizzarding. Oh, my throat is awful today. <laughs> 
We do get a sycamore. Um, is it worth dumping all of this for with the sycamore? We've only got 11 cards in deck, um, so probably not in all honesty. Because we're not even going to be able to knock out his Mega Aggron in, two ter in one turn. So I'm pretty sure we should hold on to the um, e everything in our hand. And we should just draw for one every now and again. I don't, I don't feel we need to rush anything all that much. So we're just going to carry on Resistance Blizzarding. Um, and hopefully he's going to be able to not find a Bronzong to be able to deal with the Reg Ice or a Heat Trap. Excuse me, a heat run or anything like that, um, and we should be able to hopefully secure the game by knocking out this second Mega Agron or the, the first Mega Agron, um, the second EX on our opponent's side of the field. He may have drawn something um, a little bit interesting. He seems to be taking his time over this decision, so. He's probably found something pretty interesting, uh, but he's just going to pass it over, and we are going to be able to... Again, there's no real reason for us to use any of these cards. Um, there's no need to. There's no reason to overexpend at all. So let's just Resistance Blizzard and pick up another two prizes. Hopefully we'll pick up a Lysander or a Water Energy or something. And unfortunately we get a Level Ball and a Muscle Band. Um, both pretty good, but neither of which is all that helpful. Um, that 30 damage that we did in the first place, okay, he's actually going to concede. Uh, there, was, there wasn't very much he could do there, unless he had a way of being able to knock out that Reg Ice uh, in one turn. Or not even in one turn, I suppose, knocking out, knocking it out at all would have been uh, beneficial, but I, I'm actually going to leave it there. My throat is absolutely killing me. If you would like to see more with this deck, as you can see, I haven't re really been playing the ladder at all. Um, if you'd like to see more of this deck, I, I'm sure... Joe will be more than happy to demonstrate it on Wednesday um, as part of the first episode of the Ladder series. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an interesting deck. It's not the most um, crazy concept. It's just being able to uh, sort of lock our opponent out of being able to do anything major and consistently be able to get the turn one Vileplume out. I feel it's um, a pretty consistent version of Vileplume at the moment. A lot of people have been trying Vileplume with this, that and the other. But I think this is one of the most consistent variants, simply because there's just so much um, dedicated to, be able to, to being able to get it out in one turn. Uh, it's definitely really consistent, and uh, whilst it, it doesn't seem all that sort of enjoyable to play, it's definitely a really interesting deck that you should um, at least test against, I think. Just because I think people will... Uh, a few people have been been talking about this, and it has been um, spot pointed out by a couple of pretty good players on places like Verbank and other sort of Facebook community groups and some YouTube channels as well. So it's definitely not completely under the radar, um, and it's definitely something you should be testing if you've got any standard tournaments in the next week, uh, few weeks. Um, but bar that, I'm sorry that I couldn't do any more battle videos for you guys. Hopefully by the end of the week. My voice will be a little bit better, so perhaps over the weekend I'll uh, put up another video or maybe a live stream or something, just playing with this deck because it's not it's not the most fun, but it's a lot of um, fun being able to see how quickly you can get the Vileplume set up and things like that. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm sorry the video wasn't a little bit longer than perhaps you were uh, you were expecting, but uh, for now this is all my voice can really sustain. Um, but yeah, make sure you stick around for Joe's video on Wednesday on the ladder series and then on Friday, I believe Joe is doing, um, I don't know what deck he's doing for expanded actually, but you can definitely expect an expanded deck analysis on Friday from either me or Joe. I would imagine it will be Joe this week. I know he's got a few ideas, um, up his sleeve. So yeah, make sure you stick around on the channel and don't forget to let us know what video, what, uh, rule sets you would like for the ladder series on Wednesday. Uh, the more creative, the better. Obviously, we want to make the series as interesting as possible. Um, so if you've got a really unique rule that you want to share with us, definitely do it, and we will see if we can implement it in some way um, for either this season or next season if Joe doesn't have um, enough time to be able to implement a particularly difficult rule into this season. But hopefully he will. But yeah, enough talking. My voice can barely hold on anymore. So thank you very much for watching. 
I've been Jack from Omnipoke, and I will see you all in another video.